How are we going everybody? I'm out in the cold today. It's probably about eight degrees or nine degrees. I've got the woolies on. I've come out here next to the dam to have a look at the olive trees. I haven't done any pruning since the last time. And that would have been over a year ago. So these trees are putting on some growth at the moment and I'm looking at it thinking, should I let them continue like that? Nah, I'm actually gonna cut them down. You would cut them a little bit later, but because we had a little bit of warm weather, have a look at all this. There's all this new growth. I don't need this. And if you remember the last time, if you don't, you can look it up, olive trees pruning and all that. The last time I spoke about them, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of the branches on these trees so that you can create the open vase shape. And admittedly, every time you cut it, it'll always grow back in the middle again. So it's not a case that once you cut it, it's always going to stay like that. Plants will always rebuild the central parts of it. So the more canopy they have, the better they grow overall. But we've also got to factor in where they're growing. And in this space here, I don't want them to grow into a big tree like those ones over there. I want them to grow small and stay contained. So these trees are going to be cut. Well, I'm going to cut the middles out of middle out of them, thin out the base and just make sure there's no damage caused by the, uh, the rabbits. Let's start with this one, what do you reckon? I was looking at those ones over there. That one's not too bad, but we'll go to that one after this. All right, we've got one branch here. Have a look at this. We've got another branch there. We've got another one here, and we've got another one here and a couple of little ones underneath. What we want to do is establish this one on its own like that, okay? So that's growing out too far already. I don't want that middle to grow out like that, so take that off like that. I'm not gonna work this too much. Just take the tips off for now contain it, that's going to cause it to thicken up again. So I still need to go back and thin that out. But let's work on thinning out the centre. See this one here? That's come straight up. I don't need it there. I want my leaves to be out here somewhere. So that's going to come off like that. This part in the middle, again, I don't want this. Remember folks, what you see here is going to scare you. All right? because you're not going to get olives two feet off the ground. Well, you can if you keep the tree small, but that's not what I'm aiming to do here. I don't want to be fruiting down here. So all these leaves down here, all these branches down here are actually going to turn out to be larger branches, thicker branches. They're going to be the structural integrity or the foundation of the tree. So we need to thin out the center. Look this down here. We don't need this over here. And if you come around the corner here, look at the damage. Look at this, look at it. They've already attacked. Seriously, they've attacked every tree. I'm going to go wrap all the tree trunks now. That's it, I've had enough of this. That's enough damage. Look down here, there's a big hole down here. That's been damaged there as well. So rabbits are out in full force, no matter what time of the year it is on our property. You know what I'm going to do with all these trunks? Now, I did put tree guards on all the other fruit trees out in the orchard. I didn't put it on these olive trees because we're only, what, 50 metres from the house. And then again, I've seen rabbits three metres from the house. What I'm going to do in these, in the short term, I'm going to do a trial here, is use electrical tape or, you know, an insulation tape of some sort that's a little bit pliable, more pliable than not, and just wrap it around the trunk a little bit and create that sort of covering. I'm I'm hoping the rabbits won't eat it or otherwise there are other tree guards where they're like a pig's tail, pig tail which is a flat plastic that wraps around and gives way as the tree trunk starts to grow. So that's the next stage what I've got to do with all these trees here. But let's get back to thinning this out. All this stuff in here, let's get rid of it, we don't need it, okay like that. Anything growing towards the centre is not needed. See another branch growing underneath this branch? If I leave it that's just going to grow up or you can trade it out there, but I don't need it. That's gone. This one down here, that's gone. There's one there, yep. Get rid of all those. And now we look at the inside growing. Now with every branch that grows out, let's look at this like we're about two years in advance, okay? So two years from today, what's this branch gonna do here? That's gonna keep growing out. That's going to grow out. They're both going to thicken up. We don't need them to thicken up like that. We need this to sit out here like that. So we need to get rid of that one. All right. And we need to get rid of this one in the middle. Again, a branch that comes out, open vase again. You can allow this to stay on, no harm at the moment. This sucker here is useless. I don't need him growing up like that. There's a second one. See this open vase here? One, two, not bad. This inside doesn't have to be there. Again here, that's a third one. Oh, we're pushing the boundaries here. We can have that there, yep. But that little branch down there is useless. Remember, no fruit's gonna come here in two years. It's gonna be up here from here upwards. We need to build the structure here. So we sacrifice. Now, in, in actual fact, looking at it like this, 
I've got one too many branches down here. I'm actually gonna, I think, I need to weigh this down and I think I should just take this one off completely. It's too low. No two trees will be identical unless you specifically grow them from cutting or seed or grafted and train every single upright shoot that starts with pruning and training outwards from young so you can have them identically the same. That's really easily done and possible but it's a long time or task that you need to have it behind your belt. So we're talking two or three years of working at it whereas all these trees they're all exposed to the elements, they're all in a different position, they all have a slight lean in a different way, so therefore they're all going to grow in a different way. You can't control that. This shoot keeps growing up. Has it been cut off yet? No. See that leader there? That is the same continuous branch coming through here all the way. If I don't cut it off, it's just going to go all the way over there. So I need to lop it off to an equal level as the rest of them. And we'll just go about there. And we need to thin out some of these. Just take the tips off for now. We won't thin them out too much, I reckon, now because it's still too cold. You'll get a little bit of growth, but just a little tip prune like that just to control it from not stretching out too far. A couple more here. They're growing in. Again, this branch here has been forked off here. Forked off. All right. Understand my Greek <laughs> before I say it the other way. <laughs> and a few out there, hey, come back here for a second. No more keyboard warriors, all right? Because I've got a bigger keyboard than yours. <laughs> you can cut that out if you like, but anyway, back here. See, that's been forked off here. It's been cut off once, and that's where it's doubled up. See that? One, two, by cutting that off. Now, if we leave this to grow further out, it's going to get even longer again, so you've got to trim that off. And I reckon about 30, 40 or 50 centimetres maximum between one prune and the other. Some people will say 60, it really depends on your place, the space you have. But don't let them grow longer than, you know, that much per branch before you cut it off. Otherwise it'll be a long sort of leaning and just a lanky looking branch. And probably very non-productive. Now that there, I'm going to take this off. See that's growing in, wrong way that's gone take this off again it's growing out too far we don't want it that high let's cut it back down here for now and we're nearly there folks it's not much more than that just take all these little tips off because they're going to stretch out too far i can thin it out more but i won't at this stage i'll do it in springtime or just before spring because we'll see a lot more new growth coming on there if i do this how does this look not too bad what do you reckon Pretty good? Okay, we can tip prune, but that's, you get the gist of things here. Open up the vase. We'll go to one more tree before we finish off. Let's go to this one. Suckering, very important. Have a look at all this. Can you see what's going on here? Look at that, we've got a second tree growing down here. That's it there. We've got the stake here. It's got to come out. Look at all these suckers. Olive trees, and these are grouse cuttings actually. If they're from the rootstock, you can propagate these folks quite easily. Um, a layering effect. So you can leave this on the branch. I can't do it right here, but let's say this was all soil. This is the layering. So we can strip all that down like that, right? You can run your nail across there or run your, what do you call, your secateurs or knife, like that. Leave the tip on if you want or just pinch it off. Now what happens here, while it's still attached to the first part, it's like the air layering pods that we have, the layering pods that we stick on a tree, the little balls, rather than stick it on a tree because we've got suckers down here, we bury these in the ground, we put soil on top or the soil that's there, put a weight on top so it doesn't move, make sure this side's sticking out and watch it grow and give it you know, a few months. It depends on the season. This time of the year you ain't going to see much. The root growth will develop from late July, August and then say let's September, October, you come along, you cut it off like that and you dig it up and I guarantee you'll have roots all along here. It'll start developing roots but you remove the bottom part, you don't need that, just keep it from the roots and there's your little rootstock cutting. Now this will grow into a wild olive tree. You want to graft onto this because it's part of the rootstock not part of the graft on top. When you graft onto these then again if you've got olive trees that aren't grafted that's the quickest way to create new cuttings from it, layering it. So we've got rid of those, a little bit more on the other side. This one here was already thinned out really well last time. It's got a better structural shape, a little bit lower on that side but you can see this little short one there trying to push out and there's all this new growth coming straight up in the middle. 
let's not waste the energy there. Let's get rid of all that because we want to focus the energy towards the outside like that. You can leave the leaves on, they're not going to hurt anybody. Just don't let them grow too big. And that's what we're doing. Some of you may freak out, I'm going to get rid of that because that's growing straight up. That's growing straight up. Take that off, take that off. And for now, uh, we'll get rid of that. And just bring these down so they don't grow out too much. Middle part's okay, we'll get rid of that. There's a lot of branches, we don't need them all. But for now, for this time of the year, ain't going to hurt to leave them on. As long as you've got the open vase shape going on, that's the main thing because as it grows and these thicken up, you'll start to see the, sh the tree taking its shape and the canopy will start from here and I'm going to grow them out. They're not going to be the perfect open vase, they're going to have their own you know, characteristics, but I want the branches out to here. I want the other one, this has got to go, forget about this dead silver birch. That's going to grow out to here, that's going to grow out to here. It'll be just enough to get my little head in between, huh? my little head. Big pond in the head, mate. <laughs> All right, last one. Same thing, all the upright growth, we cut it off, we open it up, and then at the end we give it a good feed. Now folks, I'm not going to do it on live here now. You know what I'm doing. If you need to see more information or learn more about it, you can email us. Um, it's Vasily or ask Vasily at vasilysgarden.com. Our two stores are open. That's right, our uh, pickup locations are this. So we've got Coburg and Lethbridge, so you can click and collect there. Coburg's open from Wednesday to Sunday, so you can save yourself on the postage, or Lethbridge as well. So it's vasilysgarden.com. Our specials are still running through. We've got plenty of products heavily discounted, so you can enjoy at home. Superfood, seeds, black grid, all the above. Vasilysgarden.com is where you get all your great products at discounted prices. From me, Vasily, Maresi.